Hello, welcome again to Jack Rabbit Journal. The Jack Rabbits off a 55 to 10 win over Southern Utah on the football field, Hank, and the Jacks get to 2 and 0 and maybe not, surprise, not surprised by the win by the Jackrabbits, but by the spread in this game, a 45-point game? Absolutely. I certainly expected them to win this game, but not by that margin, no. Um, expected the Thunderbirds to come out and give a, a bit more of a fight uh, than what they did. And early on, they, they seemed to have some, you know, some cohesion offensively and you know, were put, able to put some points on the board and, and maybe confuse the Jacks here and there uh, on the defensive side of yeah. the ball. Um, but in the end, uh, you know, we talked about last week, the Jackrabbits got the win at Kansas. They needed to be excited about that. But we heard from them, and it was obvious to us as well that these guys could play better. And that's exactly what they did this past week, and you know, the results were on the scoreboard. Southern Utah did come out, take a 7 to nothing lead, but then South Dakota State scores 48 straight points, dominates from there. Brady Mangarelli with three touchdowns in this game, two of them in the first half. He had one from 13 yards, another one from 37. A great run and great blocking on both of those touchdowns by Mangarelli. The Rabbit defense, as you said, Hank, settled in after that first Southern Utah drive, stopped the Thunderbirds pretty cold after that, got the first sack of the season, came from Cole Langer. The Jacks had three sacks in the game, good to see. And then Zach Lujan and Jake Winicky, they've got a good connection. They hook up for a 66-yard score in the first half. Jacks lead 27-7 to at halftime, and more of the same in the second half. Lujan to Winicky on a fade route for another score. 11 catches, 205 yards in this game for Jake Winicky. Mangarelli ends up with 143 yards and three touchdowns. 55-10 to is the final, and good thing to see they weren't satisfied being up 27-7. to Absolutely. Keep it going. You know, uh, continue to run your offense. And that's uh, that's what Stig does every single week when they get up like that. Uh, the 77 yard play at the end of the yeah. at the end of the game, you know, uh, things happen. Guys make plays. And uh, as a defense, you either stop them or you don't. And it was it was a great showing by the Jacks, you know, rolling into the bye week here. They've got a lot uh, that they can feel good about, uh, but still plenty of work to do. All right. Uh, we'll take you up to Brookings and go through the first half to big plays with Coach Stiglmeyer when we come back on Jack Rabbit Journal. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. Zach Zenner is now in the National Football League. Austin Sumner's gone. There were all kinds of questions this year about how the Jack Rabbit offense was going to be. But we keep talking about this, have been for the last couple of years. The new talent, the incoming talent, just keeps getting better and better every year. Brady Mangarelli, Jake Winicky, these kind of guys. Absolutely. It, 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 it's, a, it's a tribute to this coaching staff, um, what they've been able to do over the last couple of seasons with bringing in the types of kids that you can now that you've had this success. And, and what I think that it does is it takes good teams or, or pretty good teams. It has the potential to take them to the next level to become great teams. Because, sure, you've got the leadership. You've got juniors and seniors who've been playing for a while. And rather than just having uh, younger guys without any experience and maybe not as much talent to fill in these holes now you've got talented potential difference makers who are filling in these holes and playing key roles as young players within the program all right the uh, offense for sure is rolling right now here's coach Stiglmeyer talking about his offense and then the big plays of the first half it's been a pleasant surprise and, and when I say that so often the second string guy that goes in surprises the heck out of you so our offense is really doing well and you never know what you're going to get out of a game. I know you, you probably felt pretty good going into this game, but you never know exactly what you're going to get going into a game, do you? Well, you don't because you watch film, but it's a different team against them, different schemes against them. And so I really thought it was going to be a battle, and it started out as a battle. And then uh, both sides of the ball played pretty well, and it, it became a blow up. All right, you get into the uh, newly renovated, halfway renovated Coughlin alumni. Great student section down there at the end for this ball game. Best student section ever, and uh, I wanted to hug each one of those guys because they made a difference. Uh, here you start, I see you start off running the ball, and I tell you what, when you can get into the secondary, nobody's touched you. Uh, things are going well. You get one penalty here. You had a couple penalties that you weren't happy with. Well, we had uh, we had seven or eight penalties that I wasn't happy with, but but here essentially we run the same uh, play and uh, uh, our center does a really nice job of picking up a guy that he wasn't supposed to pick up. He kind of just played and, and consequently a big play in the football game. All right, Mangarelli down the sideline. We'll come back and break down that play a little bit later, but uh, all the way into the red zone here. Jacks missed a field goal on that drive, but this was nice. First sack of the season, you had three in the game. Well, that yeah, that a great, great play by Cole. Really, our D-line just crushed their old line. The thing I was disappointed in, uh, we did that without a twist, without a pass rush, and, and then we got into all this twisting and stuff. Here, this is just good play on their part. A good football team is going to execute some good plays, 
and uh, Jimmy just was playing good defense, got called for interference. I don't think it was interference, but uh, they executed. And then they bring a guy all the way across the field here for a touchdown. Yeah, this is hard to defend. This is a, what we call naked or a bootleg, and T.J. Lele has to pick that guy up crossing. We're in halves coverage there, and that's his area. And again, good football team. They got us on, on our heels a little bit because of the tempo stuff. But after that first drive, you shut them down. What? I mean, it was like flipping a switch. What happened? I, I really think our guys, we didn't call any different defenses. We literally just said, calm down. This is what happened. And our guys gained some confidence, and we played pretty well. Third down here, TJ Lally making a stop to get the football back. It's You get a field goal in the first quarter. It's 7-3 to three, Southern Utah at the end of the first quarter. And then in the second quarter, now the offense gets going. Uh, Lujan to Jake Winicky. Well, this is, uh, I mean, I wouldn't want to play corner against Jake, <laughs> All right, even if I was a great athlete. I mean, he presses you deep. He, he, you know, you get a comeback for a first down. Uh, he's just a great football player, and, and, and Lujan understands it. This is, this is good. We, you need to have that type of play. A quarterback makes something happen. Trevor Wesley catches it and gets upfield, gets the first down. Those are mature guys making plays that help drives move. Wesley made a couple of catches uh, for first downs in the ballgame, and then Brady Mangarelli, his first touchdown of the game here. Yeah, this is just simply power. Again, you can see us blocking. We have hats on people. It's hard to make a tackle if there's a blocker on you. Jacks take the lead 10-7. And uh, they roll from there, and we get into the middle of the second quarter here. This is a fourth and three. Nick Mears breaking that up. Great play. Great play. In fact, uh, real early, just before that, he had missed a tackle. And so it's good to see a guy come back, play in the present. That, that, who knows, that play may have won us the football game. And then uh, two plays later, Lujan and Jake Winicky, they were grabbing and doing whatever they could to stop him, and they couldn't do it. That's, that's uh, Tom, that's tough defense. When you're, when you're trying to collision a guy 15 yards downfield, if you miss, you're dead. And in that case, Jake is a big, strong guy. He ran over him. What are you writing down here? I, 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 the, the grocery list, obviously. <laughs> throw no, it, to, I, I throw it to, to Jake more? <laughs> I try to keep notes. This is, that's an unbelievable catch. Uh, I try to keep notes so that we leave nothing to chance. That's my personality. That young man is a great football player. Very good at adjusting to the ball, as you see right there. And then Mangarelli here, second touchdown. You got Bloom and Kane Lauscher and Landberg and Winicky all with great blocks here. Yeah, and then and then Brady is so special. There's a knack there. You can't teach that. He is so special at reading blocks, really getting close to the block so so the, 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 the defender has no, no chance and then making a cut. Uh, he's, he really had a nice game. So after being down 7 nothing, Jacks go up 24-7, and then Cody Hazlett had a big game defensively. Oh, uh, He, he, he kind of uh, just exploded onto the scene. I mean, he's a really good athlete. He's new in our program last year. Uh, he transferred in, but it's fun to see him have that success and, and the energy that comes with that success. And then that leads to a field goal, and it's 27-7 at halftime. Jacks uh, with the lead. You roll up 300 yards in that first half. You had the football for almost 20 minutes because the defense just kept taking it away and getting it back for your offense. Well, we, 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 like you said earlier, we settled in and we played up to our potential. Now, after I watched the film, we got a lot of work to do. I mean, our tackling wasn't great. Uh, there's some things in terms of pass rush we can do better. Uh, we had some dumb penalties, but I tell you what, we'll take 300 yards and 27 points in any half. Big numbers for the Jackrabbits, and they matched them in the second half. That's coming up next. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. The Jackrabbits lead Southern Utah 27-7 at halftime. The Jackrabbit defense holds Southern Utah to just over 100 yards in the second half, and they make that lead even bigger. We have preached to have a top eight seed mentality. We've talked about uh, playing at a championship level. It doesn't matter what the score is. You know, every play is a chance to put your signature on being a great football team. And that's all we said at halftime. Go out and make a statement, right? Go and say how good a football team we are. They did a nice job. Yeah, did a very nice job of that. That Jackrabbit logo on the S-Jack lighting up at night looks very beautiful. Some defense here early in the uh, third quarter. Nick Mears with a tackle here on third down. And then Southern Utah, they've got a defensive end named James Cowser who gets a sack here. They're talking about... NFL possibly for this game. This guy's a special player. Yeah, he goes uh, right by Charlie Harmon like he's not even there. And uh, and just, he's great with his hands. He gets a de an offensive lineman's hands off him. He's very athletic. He's long. You can see his long arms. He is He's a, the kind of defensive end you want on your team. All right, Jack's defense again. Jared Bloom, the transfer from Nebraska, getting in on the play here along with Dallas Brown. Yeah, and, and a number of times in this game it was third and long or second and long, and they ran the football. And I think that was a credit to maybe what they thought our 
defensive line could do. A special teams play here. JT Hassel, I don't think he got a hand on that, but they shanked the punt, and I thought you were going to go scold somebody here, but congrats to JT Hassel. First, I, I had to help the officials out, mark the ball. They were a little off on that. And then I just, you know, I want to congratulate guys. He doesn't get all the reps he wants. That made a difference in the football game. All right, we get uh, Lujan again. Good catch by Cam Jones. Nice to see him get a catch. You know, the, the, the cool thing, and you saw it there again, Zach Lujan has the ability to stand in the pocket, move up. You hear that, but that again is a knack. And uh, he'll, get, he'll get whacked once in a while. Uh, here you see Wesley making another good play. That was a third down play also. Uh, Zach Lujan's really playing some good football. Yeah, he was right on in this ball game. More than 600 yards in the first two games for Lujan. This is on a third and two. Mangarelli's third touchdown. Of the game. Yeah, you, you put all that meat in the backfield, you're going to get three yards, two yards once in a while. And then Brady makes a good cut again and gets in the end zone. The, people will defend that better. We, they've seen it a couple of games now. I'm sure Robert Morris, our next opponent, will, will, will have a new look for us in that. All right, 34-7, Jack's in the lead after three quarters. Uh, Wesley this time gets behind the defense all the way down to the 10-yard line, and then you bring back in the heavies with Langer and Schultz and Isaac Wallace in the backfield. Really a nice cut by Isaac here. The play is meant to go outside. He just sees, you know, again, you can't teach that. Walks in the end zone. That's not where he's supposed to run the football, but he but he, he felt it and he ran it. Going back to Wesley, that was a, that was a stutter and go. That was a three-step drop look. They bid on it. We were able to throw it over his head. If we make a little better throw, we're uh, we're uh, uh, we're in the end zone. Here, here's simply a lob kick. We're not onside in this thing. We're just saying uh, we want you to fair catch it, and and they don't see it, and so. Consequently, again, Cody Hazlett has a big play in the football game and, and recovers the fumble. He was the first guy there. Yeah, it's 41-7, and the Jacks get back on it again, and then right back to Jake Winicky, who is unguardable. Un well, he, he's, he's tough, and we put him in the slot. He's never been in the slot in a football team. That is a matchup against a safety rather than a corner. Normally, those guys aren't as quick. And so, again, great job by our offensive coaches finding ways to get an advantage, not just with Jake Winicky, but all our players. And then you split him out this time. This isn't even fair, the fade to Winicky for a touchdown. Yeah, that's tough. He's so long. You can just get it close to him. He's going to catch it. What I think, what I love about him is he gives the ball to the officials. He's, he's not dancing or anything. He's just happy to play football. 200 yards plus, 200 yards plus receiving for Jake Winicky in this game. It's 48-7, and then another play here by Cody Hazlett, who had a monster game for you. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's advantage Jackrabbits right now. The score says you can blitz, you can, you can kind of keep things in front of you, and, and, and Cody benefits. The other guys benefit from that. Defense was just jazzed after about that first drive when Southern Utah went down and scored. After that, the defense seemed to just get pumped up a little, a little extra. Well, when you have success, you build on that, you know, and if you don't let them, again, they had the one fourth down where Mears stops them, you know, you just, they just couldn't get anything rolling, and what, what happens with the defense? They just get, get uh, more confident and more confident, and things go better. All right, uh, time of possession, you just took care of that. Almost 600 yards. You had 15 possessions in this game. You get seven touchdowns and a couple of field goals. Very efficient offensively. Well, we, we had a game two, three years ago, and it, this has nothing to do with our opponent, but I literally went through every series and said, if we don't have this penalty, we don't have this, 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 we, we would have played perfect. This was a game where uh, there was a point where we, play, we were playing pretty close to perfect. Big numbers all over the board, including Jake Winicky again, more than 200 yards in this game. Are the Jacks doing some creative things, trying to do different things to get him freed up this year? They are. Um, I think we're going to see a heck of a lot more of that moving forward. Now that teams who watch film on these guys, the last two games anyway, these teams have played a lot of man against him, and then they figured out the hard way that, oh, wait, yeah, we can't cover this guy one-on-one. -on -one. So the, the Jack Herberts are going to have to become more and more creative as teams begin to adjust their defensive schemes to take him out of the game. All right. Up next, we will go to the board and dissect a running play that the Jacks ran to perfection against Southern Utah. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. Let's go to the board. This is a play the Jacks ran a lot of the first half against Southern Utah, uh, successful almost every time. And we're going to lay it out here. You got the tight ends. They start with two tight ends on the left side. They motion. Dallas Goddard over here to the right side. You got Brady Mangarelli as the running back. 
Trevor Wesley, Winnicky are the wideouts here that do a great job blocking downfield. What happens on this play? Well, a whole lot happens on this play, Tom. A whole lot of good uh, from this offensive unit. And we're going to go ahead and call this play power uh, because we do get a kickout block uh, by our tackle and we do get a pulling lineman. Um, it's not a traditional power play, but uh, for the mo that's what we're going to call it here today. Uh, and so hat for hat uh, is what you're going to see uh, as far as a, a complete unit effort in blocking downfield uh, by the wide receivers as well as your big tight end, Mr. Goddard, who's going to essentially lead the way up on the linebacker. I mentioned the kickout block of the defensive end. We want to push him and then get the down block uh, by the guard on the tackle. Now, who do we have left? We've got a linebacker running free. He's the tackler on the play. So who's going to take care of him? You're going to see the big athletic center, Mr. Onasorgi, wrap around and pull and just get enough. It's not a pancake block, but it's just enough to chip this guy and keep him from tackle, tackling Mr. Mangarelli, who follows his guys right up the sideline for what is a big gain, one of many for the Jackrabbits last Saturday. This goes for 39 yards on this play we're going to show you. One of the keys is they run away from James Kowser, the defensive end for Southern Utah that had a couple of sacks in this game. They used the motion to do that. Uh, here's Stig on why this play worked so well. We initially started in unbalanced and we traded both our tight ends to make a balanced set, if you will, and that put Kowser, their good defensive end, who's always on the split side, on the, the new tight end side. All right, and then when, as we motion Dallas Goddard across, we get a pseudo tight end side, which is where we want to run the ball. We simply get a hat on everybody. They don't adjust their players. And the big block here will be our center uh, just folding around the guard's block. You see it inside there. And that's the only unblocked guy. And everybody else backside, you see a hat on everybody. And uh, we call that an advantage, all right? You, you know, anytime you can run and get a hat on everybody, it literally is an advantage. Here you see it in slow motion. Again, we've traded one tight end. We motion the other guy back. You see the front side, we get a hat on everybody. You see our center go around and block their inside back. Or no, there's, there's nobody free to tackle. All right, and that, that again is a great job by our offense, a great job by our offensive line coaches uh, figuring out how to, how to run this football play. And then you run this a couple of times, a handful of times during the game. Isaac Wallace cuts it up inside one time. It's just that running back's got to read it, but that was so well blocked. That was beautifully executed, wasn't it? It is, it's perfect. And, and uh, it, later on in the game, while we were doing that, you could see him pointing, knowing we're going to run to the split side. You have to adjust your defense to give your, your guys a chance. Well, Brady Mangarelli running hard behind that formation. Up next, the Rabbit Fire interview with the Jackrabbit running back. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Brady Mangarelli is a sophomore running back from Prescott, Arizona. He's got four touchdowns in the first two games for the Jackrabbits, and he is in this week's Rabbit Fire interview with David Brown. First question, why are you number 44? Um, number 44 because it wasn't my choice. I just showed up and that's the number they gave me. You know, being a walk-on, you don't really get to choose what number you get, so it was given to me and I just, I, I like it, so I'm just gonna keep it. Now, what number were you in high school? I was number 10 because I would be quarterback some, from time to time, throw the ball here and there, but that was just the number I chose. No, no real reason. But you've embraced 44. I embraced 44, yeah, absolutely. Coolest or worst nickname you've ever had? Uh, let's see. I was called Dash when I was in Little, in little League <laughs> playing baseball. I thought that one was pretty cool. But uh, uh, Oni, so, Oni, Jacob Onisorgi, the center, calls me Brady LSTC because he says I always leave something to chance with everything I do. And we're supposed to leave nothing to chance, which is what Coach Dick says. So. <laughs> that's, that's getting creative. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. bad from Onisorgi. <laughs> Here's a tough one. What was the best day of your life? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's, that's OK, here it is for sure when I walked out on the field to play against Missouri Tigers. The only thing I've ever wanted to do in my life is play Division One football. And like when, you, when I say Division One, I, I mean like, you know, like Missouri, Nebraska, you know, the big schools, the big five conference schools. And I got fortunate enough to come to South Dakota State and just living my dream, walking out on the field against Missouri Tigers. I was just like, I couldn't believe it. It was just, it was overwhelming, but it was awesome. Very, very cool. Like Trevor Wesley, you're from Arizona. So do you have more winter or summer clothing right now? I had more summer clothing when I showed up, but you have to quickly adapt and get winter clothing. So I almost have more winter clothing now. 
is it tough that you can't use it back in Arizona, or, or have you gotten used to the cold and then you go back to Arizona and people there are in like sweatshirts when it's 60 degrees? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got, I thought I would be adapted to the cold like really fast, but I'll still go home and I'll still wear a sweatshirt and stuff. Uh, it, it just depends. Among all the running backs, who wins the 100 yard dash? The 100 yard dash would probably be Isaac Wallace. He's probably the fastest right now, yeah. Wouldn't even say yourself? No, I wouldn't, no. I'd, yeah, he's, he's the fastest as far as just straight line speed. Yeah, he's the fastest. At least you're an honest guy. <laughs> what is your favorite Coach Stinglemeyer catchphrase? Holy nutmeg is definitely the best one because I was in shock when he said it the first time, but now it's just second nature. <laughs> Target or Walmart? Definitely Walmart. Target. Been screwed over by Target a lot, it seems like. <laughs> and you only have a Walmart in Brooklyn. Yeah, we only have a Walmart in Brooklyn, so yeah. What is your least favorite food? Food you can't stand? Just in general, like food? In general. Yeah, in general food. Let me think. I would say like, I, I like seafood, but there's some seafood that I just cannot do, like uh, oysters and stuff like that. Can't stand it. Favorite movie of all time? Mm, I'd say The Dark Knight. Dark Knight's probably the best movie I've seen. And then going off that movie theme, last question, who would play you in a movie about your life? In a movie about my life, I would say uh, Steve Carell, just because I love The Office and he's super funny and I quote The Office all the time with Nick Farina, so I think it's funny. Very good, thank you very much. Brady's had a tremendous opportunity to sit behind and learn from one of the greatest football players in the history of this program. No doubt about it, he's primed and ready for this season. He looks fantastic so far. All right, the Jacks are off this Saturday. They play Robert Morris on the 26th. We'll get much more into that game next week. We'll see you then on Jack Journal. <laughs>